We're going to now move to Representative Berg's bill, House File 2609. I will move to lay over House File 2609. There is a DE1 amendment. Um, I will also move the DE1 amendment. And because it is a complete DE, I think it makes sense to adopt the DE and then uh, you can describe the bill. Any discussion to the DE amendment? All those in favor of the DE1 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The DE1 amendment is adopted. And Representative Berg, your bill as amended is before us. Please explain your bill. Thank you so much, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Today we have an opportunity and a tremendous responsibility before us. Together, we can choose to continue to build on the hard work that members of this committee, members on both sides of the aisle, and those that came before us in our efforts to learn to evolve and to take collective action to keep our communities safe. I'd like to ground us in the values that called each of us into public service as we engage into this discussion. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to present House File 2609. Last month in my community, and our law enforcement and emergency management services community suffered a tremendous loss. It was shocking and horrible, and the lives of many families were torn apart that day. What we have come to find out through the preliminary investigation that led to the indictment is that the, is that the assailant had lost his gun rights in 2007 after being convicted of a felony assault. As we all know now, there were multiple guns in the home and the AR-15 style weapons that were used against the first responders should not have been in possession of the assailant. One AR-15 style gun was equipped with a binary trigger that as the indictment states, fires one shot when the trigger is pulled and another when the trigger is released, effectively doubling the rate of fire. As we have learned, the use of such a trigger essentially creates an automatic weapon which does not allow for any type of defense to be mounted. Last week's federal indictment of the assailant's girlfriend alleges that she knew or should have known that that assailant could not legally possess a firearm. While strap purchases are already illegal under Minnesota law, our law contains loopholes that need to be closed in order to hold offenders accountable. House file 2609 as amended does the following. It makes the Minnesota straw purchase law effective by requiring that the pur purchaser know or reasonably should know that the transferee is a prohibited person. This makes the standard consistent with federal law. In addition, it closes a loophole in current law that only prohibits straw purchasing for certain types of firearms. Our bill will prohibit straw purchasing for all firearms. The bill also moves the crime of straw purchasing from a gross misdemeanor to a felony. The bill requires the BCA to do a report on gun trafficking. And third, the bill bans binary triggers on guns. This bill is one more step we can take in addition to other actions taken by this committee to keep our families and law enforcement safe from gun violence. Gun violence requires a multifaceted response. And this bill closes loopholes in current laws in order to hold offenders accountable. I am proud to carry this bill. I hope you will all join me in supporting it. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will stand for questions. All right, and we did not have anybody sign up in advance to testify. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this bill? All right, I'm not seeing any. Um, so we can move on to member discussion. Representative Hudson. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Berg. Um, I'm just a little curious uh, regarding the thought process behind this bill. So um, as is a matter of record, uh, the minority 
attempted to declare an urgency on the House floor recently to pass the bulk of what you've presented before us today, which is the piece regarding enhanced penalties for straw purchases. So obviously we're for that. Um, what's the rationale in inserting the language in line 217, adding um, what appears to be targeted at binary triggers, um, that would be di devices that fire two shots, one upon the pull of a trigger and one upon the release of a trigger. Um, what's your thinking there in terms of the relevance to that, to the straw purchasing piece? Representative Burke. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative, for the question. Um, the two are related, oh, as we saw from the incident in my community. Um, and so the thought process behind a binary trigger, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, is that it takes any type of firearm once it's modified or comes with a binary trigger uh, from the, the one motion of depressing the trigger and the bullet comes out to there being um, one motion where it, it um, releases the bullet on the way out and as, as you pull your finger back. And so, um, as mentioned, it turns a firearm into a semi-automatic or automatic state. Representative Hudson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Berg, for, um, for that answer. I'm, I'm not sure I still understand what the thematic connection is between those two things. Um, I, I just don't understand why we couldn't have, if we obviously agree on the increasing penalties for straw purchases piece, which was made evident by our, our declaration of an urgency um, earlier on in the session, I don't know why we couldn't just have a, a clean bill that affects that rather than um, attaching a potentially controversial gun control piece of legislation to it as well. Thank you. Any further member discussion? Chair Pinto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think the connection, Representative Berg, please, please help me with this, or, or one connection besides just the need to do more regarding gun violence is that um, in the situation in your community, the tragic situation, there was both, there was a straw purchase, which is being federally indicted, but also the use of, as I gather, a binary trigger. I may be wrong about that. Can you just help, help me understand that? Representative Berg. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative, Representative Pinto. Um, so the the firearm that was straw purchased from um, the the store, which is also in my district, um, was done by the assailant's girlfriend, and it came with the binary trigger. And so that mechanism is what turns a relatively normal firearm into a firearm that, that has the capacity to be used um, like an automatic weapon. And because of that, it gave no time for our first responders to mount a reaction um, and to further protect themselves from what happened. And so that's why it's essential that as we learn, we evolve and we can take solid action to protect our communities and our first responders. Follow up. Okay. Yep. Thank sure you, Chair. So. Thank you, Chair. Um, and Representative Berg, because what I had, what I recall hearing is that the the officers um, thought that there was an automatic weapon being used, um, and it turned out it was a it was this binary trigger, um, sort of adding the um, so really so much more dangerous. I guess I would hope this provision. I, I don't know that I would have thought would have occurred to me that this provision would be controversial. In fact, um, we, you know we we banned automatic weapons, and this is something where actually those first responders thought that was being used against them. And maybe I'll just just comment that um, I also really appreciate the um, and this was an improvement on the bill that was under consideration on the House floor, is the addition uh, at the bottom of page two uh, that. Uh, of saying that uh, not only the straw purchase, you're uh, increasing to a felony, uh, but also the addition of if you reasonably know that the person uh, is ineligible. And I had said on the House floor that that the current law, the way it's written, it's almost impossible to charge. You really have to have a situation like in Burnsville where there's like text messages and everything else. And at that point, it's charged federally, which it was. So this will make it be much more. If you if you reasonably should know that the person is ineligible as a dangerous felon, um, then you should not be transferring a gun to them. So really appreciate um, you putting all this together. Thank you, Chair. Representative Kern. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Rep Berg, for bringing this forward. Um, and I just wanted to note, too, that um, I, I definitely see the relationship between the different components of this bill. Um, just 
in, from the perspective of we're looking at what, you know, what situations will um, make the use of a firearm more dangerous. And two of those things are implementing a mechanism that makes it automatic. Um, and another thing that makes a weapon more dangerous is whose hands you put it in. Um, and so I see that these are absolutely related. Um, and I just want to thank you for your work on this. Representative Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Berg. Um, I just want to say, first of all, I applaud you for bringing the bill. Um, I do think it's, a, it's the right thing to do in this moment. Uh, I've, I've spoken with you multiple times. I've spoken with impacted community members um, multiple times. And I know that your community is grieving. This is a tragedy. We're not far removed from it yet. And I think it takes a strong leader to come through with clarity and thoughtfulness in terms of how to address the issue to ensure that it doesn't happen again. I think this bill does that. I appreciated your opening statement. I saw how you have to collect yourself because of what you're going through right now and what your community is going through. And I just applaud your efforts as a strong leader to bring this bill forward. Further member discussion, Representative Witte. Thank you, uh, Chair Muller. Uh, thank you, uh, Representative Berg. I know these are difficult times and uh, throughout it all, I tried to bring something forward, um, not used in politics and it, it's been used as um, getting uh, politicized and that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to look at incidents that happen just like we have in previous ones and um, hopefully prevent them from happening. So thank you. My one question to you is um, thank you for taking the hand of uh, Representative Bennett um, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Scott, um, on the urgency, she said if someone would take that bill and um, you brought it forward. Um, did you reach out to her and see if uh, you guys could have worked together on that? Um, I think we've seen in this body when we work together our, on the SRO bills or other things. Um, we saw it yesterday with uh, Representative Wogelman and uh, represent I go I think they come they come together stronger because I think we're all coming from the same place I don't think it's um, one side or the other I think we're unified I think that's what we're trying to do here um, I guess my hope would have been that you reached out and so I just asked that question thank you represent Burke. Uh thank you chair Moeller and thank you uh, for the question and for everything that you did for our community when you served <clears throat> um, I am going to be honest, um, I did not reach out and likely a mistake on my part, but here's what I did do. As we learned from the indictment, what we were looking at, what happened in our community, how did this happen? We learned so much. It was incredibly important to do this and to do it quickly. I will tell you, I focused on my community. I called my mayor. I called my fire chief. I spoke to members close to the situation whose anonymity I won't betray. I watched hours of alarming videos. I read gun culture threads. I wanted to come here today and do two things. Engage all of us to pass meaningful and effective legislation with a nod to the service uh, that you provided, Lee Novotny, Representative Curran, those of you that do this every day, for our families that will never be the same, for our communities that deserve us to do that. And I wanted to do so honoring my community. I promise to keep politics out of it. I will stand in my integrity in that today. So thank you for the question. Representative Witte. And I'll just note, Representative Grossel is a former um, law enforcement, too. I knew they looked. She's not on our committee, so I don't think it was intentional. <laughs> Representative Witte. Thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I am supportive of uh, the straw bar part of this. and um, But I will uh, stand with you on this, because I do think we, I've said it before. It's great when we're there for the vigils. It's great when we're there on the day of the funerals, but 365, and I appreciate we're doing something 365. And um, you listened to Representative Scott, and you carried this. So thank you for getting it done. 
Representative uh, Grossel. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I guess I'm looking at this and just wondering to myself, uh, why, why not just bring the uh, straw purchaser bill forward? Why add this extra thing in there to kind of, to me, it, it, it mucks it up. It, it, that is something to be dealt with separately from the straw purchase, in my opinion. Why, why put them together? Um, Representative Byrd. Thank you so much, Chair Moeller. Thank you, Representative Grossel. I did thank you for your service in the elevator. I think you thought I was weird. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> fair. Um, that is a great question. Uh, as I mentioned, Representative Rarick is trying to teach me to handle the microphone. Um, as I mentioned, uh, through this chain of events, as we looked at the indictment and we learned the various different pieces that came together, which shed light and, and a um, holistic view of, of the situation and what we could do in response, it made sense to take the work that this committee and the Democrats and the Republicans have been working on together um, and to put it into a bill that we could both uh, enact quickly um, and, and that would address the moving pieces of, of what we saw play out. Um, if you recall what happened in Las Vegas uh, when the shooter fired into a crowd of, of folks at a concert, that was a binary trigger. And so I don't know why we would wait any longer um, to enact legislation like this. And as we get the comprehensive package that begins to address the various things we've learned, it's, it's our responsibility to do so. Representative Grassel. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, uh, that you did not uh, reach out to Representative Scott. Why not? Well, I think she's already answered that question, so we're not going to go back and actually your first question too, she'd already answered. So um, do you have any additional questions that haven't been asked yet? Well, I guess I, I do, Madam, Madam Chair. Okay, and, go ahead. and that is um, this, this straw purchase, purchaser uh, bill could have been done long before this day, should have been done long before this day, but it wasn't. And now it's, uh, now it's pulled into now it's pulled into, uh, again, you know, trying to, trying to limit uh, the Second Amendment's uh, rights to folks. And, and, and I'm, you know, it really, it disappoints me that, that well, we're trying to work on uh, protecting the communities. We're trying to work on protecting our EMS, our law enforcement, and our uh, firefighters and our paramedics. And yet, uh, you, the left keeps playing political games with this stuff. It, it's, it saddens me when, when these types of things should be, this, the straw purchaser bill should have done, been done by itself. Should have been done by itself. Because we can all agree that that, that should not be going on. And I think we all do agree that that should not be going on. But the, the uh, part about the Second Amendment issues, those are the things that need to be hashed out uh, separate from these types of things. And so, you know, I'm, you got one part of it right. I'm, I'm glad, the straw purchaser. But those, I don't know why we had to muck it up. Why you had to muck it up? Because this is, this is an important, this important uh, deal to make sure that we protect our citizens and protect our first responders. So that's all I got on this. And I believe Representative Hollins, you had a follow-up question. I do, thank you, Chair Moeller, and thank you, Representative Berg, for bringing this forward. I really appreciate it. Um, we're hearing that, that these binary triggers, adding this is mucking it up, and I was wondering if you or if someone, um, somebody who has expertise in this, I think we have somebody from the BCA here, could explain to me what binary triggers are used for, um, you I know, besides mass shootings. So we do have uh, somebody here from the BCA, Katie Cook, to explain what a binary trigger, perhaps how it works and what they're used for. Come on forward. 
And if you could um, introduce yourself first and then answer that question. Thank you. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Katie Hook, and I work at the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension and the Forensic Science Services. I am a forensic scientist in the firearms section. Um, so the question, what is a binary trigger? A binary trigger will discharge a cartridge upon pulling the trigger as well as releasing the trigger. And the effective purpose of that would be to double the rate of fire um, per trigger pull. Representative Collins. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is not, is this something that's used in hunting? Uh, Ms. Hook. To my knowledge, there's no um, set way that you need to use a specific modification or um, alteration to a firearm. Um, my understanding is that this would be mainly used for range shooting. However, when and where people are using them isn't really dictated by purchasing this specific piece. Representative Collins. Thank you. Um, this is really interesting to me because I grew up around guns and my, my, my father has many guns and I've been a lawful gun owner for a long time and I've never heard of this, even when I have guns for self-defense purposes. Um, this binary trigger has never been something that I have been introduced to or exposed to. And so it's really interesting to me why uh, for any reasonable lawful gun owner would need to have a trigger that shoots something twice as fast. Um, so I, I don't really understand how the legislation here is mucking up anything. I think this is a very reasonable restriction and I'm glad that you brought it forward. So thank you and thank you for your answering. I appreciate it. Thank you. And before you leave the table, just we had others on the list and I didn't know if they had a question for you specifically. Did anybody else have a question for her? Um, Lee Novotny. Well, we'll come back to you again as well. Okay. Closing. Well, we'll uh, my question and then uh, since she's here, I was going to ask the question of, of uh, researcher Johnson, but when you talk about release, what is your understanding of what release means? Explain that. Ms. It, I apologize. I'm You're not fine. familiar with the no. settings. <laughs> um, so in order to release the firing mechanism of a firearm, the trigger needs to be pulled, typically fully rearward, unless there would be some sort of modification. Releasing the trigger would be releasing pressure from the trigger. Um, triggers are usually uh, manufactured with a spring that will automatically return the trigger to its resting position. So by removing the finger from the trigger, the trigger would reset itself with its spring pressure. Can you follow up on that, Lee Navani? Okay, just to be clear, your definition of release is to take the pressure of the finger fully off the trigger. Yes. Ms. Hook, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and I'll address that later then. Okay. Great, I think uh, nobody else has further questions for you. So thank you so much for being available to help us understand that. Thank you very much. Um, we, next we have Chair Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I, a, a couple different things. Um, I think I, I just wanted to point out, I know Representative Pinto um, touched on this, but just so we're all clear, um, I know as uh, conversations around this, uh, this bill came forward, you know, we're, we're waiting for the, um, the indictment to come out so we could actually read and know more about what happened. And I think uh, what we have here is, you know, sometimes that line between whether something is reactive and responsive uh, versus responsive, it's not always clear exactly what's happening. But I think here we were trying to make sure that we were being responsive um, to what happened uh, with the most information that we could get while still moving, uh, you know, within our deadlines and within the parameters that we have available for us. So I really appreciate that there was at least some sort of pause to make sure that we're getting this right. Um, you know, I noted that there, there was time for the county attorneys and the sheriff's association um, to weigh in and be supportive as well. And I think that's really important. Um, and then also just wanted to make sure that it's clear for the record, and uh, hopefully you won't mind uh, me talking about this, Madam Chair, but we had already talked about um, potentially scheduling uh, the Scott bill as we were looking at other, um, you know, 
firearm legislation that may be uh, helpful to move forward this year, um, you know, before sort of the whole floor thing um, happened. So, you know, that was something that was already being discussed internally, and I think it's okay to share that um, publicly, but there are some important differences in the language in Representative Berg's language. Um, as Representative Pinto noted, um, we're changing the standard uh, to reasonably should have known instead of no, um, which I think is actually really important and makes the, the underlying statute was not super helpful. Um, and this makes it more usable to actually hold folks accountable when they're doing this, um, as well as opening it up to include, um, instead of limiting it to just pistols and semi-automatics, um, including all firearms, as we know um, in the incident in, in Burnsville, um, you know, not all of those firearms fell under that definition. Um, so I think it's important to point that out that, um, you know, the, the bill that was discussed on the House floor would not have actually prevented what happened um, because it was just increasing penalties. And the, I mean, this is sort of the, the rub of why this is hard is that it, increasing the penalties only helps after the fact if a person tries to do it again um, you know, if we, they hadn't already been on probation or weren't already charged with it previously, um, you know, we hope that increasing the penalties will sort of send the message that we really, really don't want you to be doing this behavior. And I think, um, it will help, um, to change that standard. I, I know I shared with you in conversation, um, you know, uh, some folks are not that sophisticated as we saw in the text messages in this case, but some folks are. And I know in the cases I've worked on where folks sort of know um, people who are, do, you know, they know where the line is and they sort of can walk up to that line um, to sort of maintain plausible deniability when they're, they're, you know, it's a straw purchase or some other kind of situation. So um, just wanted to point out, because I think it is really important that we're changing that standard um, and how this is different. And again, just really, um, I think this is the pace at which we should be reacting, uh, you know, responding instead of, you know, immediately throwing something out there without actually doing our work to make sure um, that we're doing it right. So I, I thank you for bringing it forward. And I uh, thank you for wading into an issue area that has not um, always been uh, your expertise, uh, but uh, appreciate you stepping up for your community. And uh, I think this is a good bill and I'm happy to support it. Representative Mueller. Thank you, Chair Miller. Um, thanks for bringing Representative Scott's bill forward. It's important. Mr. Neal, your microphone is really, I don't know, it seems close, but you want to scoot in a little bit. <laughs> All right. I got the computer. I have too many things going on here. That's much better. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Representative Scott's bill. And um, as we heard from, um, already from other people that, you know, there's already been talking about putting this together. We've heard from Representative Pinto and from Becker Finn that this is different language. And, um, and Representative Witte said, this is what happens when we work together. Um, I, since you wanted the language change, did anyone go and talk to Representative Scott? If you were hoping to bring her bill forward, did anyone go and talk to Representative Scott and ask her for new language? So that question, that's the third I mean, time. So, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not gonna send it no, back to her again. No, I understand that. I'm just saying that if, 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 this was something that we both agreed upon, and obviously there was language that you wanted to change. I think that we could have actually had worked with Representative Scott to do that. Um, I I want to just put my my claim, my stake out there to say um, this is why single subject bills are so important because we're able to come together on something that we all agree upon, and with one voice say, "Look at." Let's do something together and do it. And I know it's not the practice, and I have voted for omnibus bills too. When there are when there are issues that we can come together, we could have we could have brought this to the general register today. We are, you know, it, next week we would have brought it to the general register, and we could have just gotten it done and really have finished it after we made these adjustments that you wanted to be done. We could have brought this to the general register, and it would have been done. And so I appreciate that it's being laid over because I know there's a lot of things that we still need to work out a little bit with this uh, binary trigger. But man, I think we missed an opportunity to be able to take this language that we all agree upon 
brought it to the floor and showed that we actually are going to take action on this. So thanks for bringing it forward. Um, hope that we're able to uh, um, you know, continue working together in the future. Yeah, and I'll just note too, we're laying it over because the, um, this is not the Scott bill. Um, this is Representative Berg's bill and the Scott bill didn't have a fiscal note on it. And with the language changes that we have with this bill, with Representative Berg's bill, we requested a new fiscal note. So we want to make sure that we get that. And this committee will have the opportunity to take a look at that fiscal note before we move the bill on. Um, Representative Ingen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Berg. Uh, one question that I have as I'm looking over this bill, um, why isn't this covered under the current trigger activator law? Um, from my understanding, if uh, it increases the rate of fire, it's already illegal under current law um, because it increases uh, the rate to that of a machine gun. So can you explain to me how you came up with this current language and what it would also affect uh, besides what is already in, in statute? Yeah, and actually, I, it, can I take a crack at that? <laughs> because that was something that was surprising to me, Representative Ingen, when I read about the binary trigger and what it did when I read in the indictment how that worked. I went back to this law 60967, which we agreed on last year. We increased penalties for switches and bump stocks that was in this statute. So we pulled that language out again, and I read the definition of machine gun and um, trigger activator um, in that uh, paragraph one, which is on lines 2.13 to 2.15, in combination with the definition of machine gun on 2.3 to 2.4. I was actually surprised that these binary triggers um, are being sold by a federally licensed dealer, which to me indicates a loophole, one that we need to close. And so that's why we are specifically inc including those here, because um, apparently they are not viewing those as being forbidden under current law. Um, let's see, I think, and now we'll move on to Lee Novotny. Thank you, Chair. Um, when I read the language and I saw that you added the, the line on 217, single pull and release of the trigger, as opposed to using the language for binary trigger from the federal statutes, and I think it was important, and I thank the uh, expert from the BCA from coming down. As a former Glock instructor and being a firearms instructor and uh, AR-15 instructor and armorer, um, we're going to need to fix this unless you want to outlaw every Glock, every modern sporting rifle that is in this state. If, by the definition provided by the BCA's expert, you have to fully release the trigger, you take your finger off the trigger, this is not the same thing as what you're talking about. So we're going to need to fix this language if you want this to not make every Glock, every, every modern sporting firearm in violation of this statute. And by that, let me explain what I mean. These firearms have a sear that gets reset. So if you pull the trigger back, and the round goes off. If you hold that trigger back and then slowly bring it forward, there'll be a point where the sear will reset, and you need a separate action then going back again that will drop the sear start the firing process again. And that is not what I think what you want as described from what the BCA agent said. So we're going to need to come up with a different definition of that unless that's what you want. And uh, that's a whole different issue. Um, and I think you're talking about binary triggers, but this definition, as pointed out from the BCA agent, isn't what we're talking about. So we need to get that language cleared up. Uh, I would add several language and reporting features to the first part on gun trafficking. So I appreciate that being brought forward. Um, and then just to address some of the other things that were, that were said, um, <coughs> I was confused by what 
uh, Chair Becker Finn said about this only applies to things afterwards, but we also want to send a message. Yes, we do want to send a message. As I said on the floor, I'd rather we didn't have these tragedies. I, I would rather that we didn't have these firearms um, being transferred to people. And um, one of the ways we get that message out is to have a strong penalty for those that do provide weapons to people that shouldn't have that. Um, also made the statement, she also made a statement that we didn't, uh, that we're destroying those ideas out here. This bill, Representative Scott's bill with this exact language except what was added on has been out there since 2019. And I think some of the frustration that Representative Grossel was pointing out was that I think it passed off the floor with pretty much unanimous support in the omnibus bill last session. So it, it went off the floor and then it got lost in conference committee somehow. So as I said before, we wouldn't have been here, we wouldn't be talking about this right now um, if it would have stayed in the omnibus bill last, last session. Thank you. And I'll just um, address a few of these items um, as well. Um, with respect to the omnibus bill last year, you know, we did pass it um, off the House floor, but there never was a hearing. And so to what Chair Becker Finn said earlier about my intent to hear Scott's bill this year, and I think a couple of you knew that I was um, possibly going to hear that. I was likely going to hear that. I talked to my team about it. Um, but one of the things that has, you know, continued to come up for us was we wanted to make sure that it was effective and that reason to know standard needed to be in there. And so then when we're thinking of all of that and the indictment then came out um, and we saw that, we saw the federal language, we identified additional loopholes in our statutes, the one with respect to the binary trigger, and then looking specifically again at the straw purchaser language in current law and realizing it only applies to pistols and semi-automatic military style assault weapons. And we thought, why is it okay to be a straw purchaser for other types of firearms? That seems like a loophole that needed to be closed as well. Um, in addition to getting more information about trafficking and, and lead Novotny, I'm certainly interested in what additions you think should be added to that. So please, I'm sure Representative Berg is open to those suggestions as well. Um, also, with respect to your suggestions with the lang language on binary triggers, we're open to that. And we did know that this is something that we might need to work on further. I know we've been in consultation with the BCA. They've also been talking to the ATF about that. So if we need to revise that definition, I know that there's openness to do that. Um, in addition, I'll just note too that in the Fargo shooting, a binary trigger was used in that case as well. So we want to get this right and we want to get the language right and we're certainly open um, to doing that. So with that, um, I will move on now and you can give us closing remarks, Representative Bird. Thank you, Chair Moeller and committee members. Um, Lead Novotny, um, Thank you for that. I've been doing my best to research um, and to understand um, that so that we can write legislation and pass legislation that is accurate and that actually does what we intended to do. When I've been at the range, admittedly a terribly amateur, um, uh, I've, I've pulled the trigger and it's released and then I move on feeling relatively proud of myself for not causing any damage. Um, and so I appreciate your expertise on that subject. It's, it's always better to collaborate and get things right. Um, a lot has been said about this bill, so a, a long closing narrative isn't necessary. Um, but I wanna look at each of you and I wanna thank you for handling this discussion the way that you have for honoring my promise to my community that this would not be only about that tragedy. You've handled it really well. I'm deeply grateful. Thank you so much for hearing this bill. All right, and with that, I renew the motion and lay over House File 2609 as amended. 